Hey everyone, another self-isolation bonus video where we take a look at those old pro engineer commands from the 1980s and 1990s that are still in the software but are hidden in the interface. And once again, to get to these different anatomic features, you go to File Options, Configuration Editor, and you have to change an option, Allow Anatomic Features, from the default value of No to Yes. There is another related feature, or excuse me, option called Enable Obsoleted Features. You can set that one to, from No to Yes. And so that way you can add icons into the interface for a whole bunch of other features that are no longer in the software by default. So anyhow, in another video, I showed the flange feature, which is just a revolved protrusion. There's nothing different from it other than that, uh, except that it requires an open sketch as opposed to using an open or a closed sketch. There is another feature called a neck which is just the inverse of the flange feature. The flange feature adds material, the neck feature removes material. Let's take a look at this one. I will click on neck, and here we have the same options as in the flange feature. You can do a variable angle or choose a multiple of 90 degrees, and you can create it on one side or both sides of your sketch plane. I'll leave the default settings and click done. Now it's asking me to select a sketch plane. Let me go to the plane command and select this plane over here. I'm getting a direction for creating the feature. I can flip that if I want to. And then for setting up a sketch back in the day, you had to choose a side of the computer screen and then something to face that direction of the computer screen. These days in Creo Parametric, it automatically suggests something to you. If it can't suggest something to you, it will automatically create an internal reference. We actually don't need to set up an orientation reference in order to sketch. And I remember a couple years after I started, they added this default option to let Creo or back then pro engineer pick what you want to choose. But anyhow, let's choose to face the top of the screen, the datum plane called top. That puts me into sketch mode. Let's add in a couple of sketch references, just grabbing that surface to dimension from, and the silhouette edge. If I want to, I could remove the references that I'm not going to use. Hey, okay, let's solve and close, and now go back to our sketch orientation. And so again, this has to be an open sketch and it has to start and end on part geometry. This time I will make it into the part because it's going to remove material. Let's change our different dimensions on here by double clicking on them. And let's see, let's change this to a value of 25. Let's change this one to a value of, I don't know, 60. Just making stuff up. And now, let's just move the dimensions off of the part geometry a little bit. Another thing that is required in here is that you have a center line for your axis of revolution. Uh, years later, they would add the ability to, oops, I have to add in another sketch reference. I shouldn't have gotten rid of my data plane called top. Uh, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, years later, they added the ability to use something other than an internal center line as the axis of revolution. You could use a, an existing datum axis in the model, and later on, I think you could even use uh, the axis of a coordinate system. They added that, and of course, you can pick edges and stuff like that. But back in the day, you had to sketch in an internal center line. All right, everything is good here. Let's hit the check mark over there. Now it's asking me for the angle of the feature. Let's do 90 degrees. And if I rotate my model, there you can see it's scooped out 90 degrees of this revolved feature. So again, the flange and the neck feature, they're just the opposites of each other. And also talking about the pro engineer days, these days we have tools like extrude, revolve, sweep, Swepland, etc. Back in the day in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, you would choose whether you wanted to make a protrusion or a cut, and then you would choose the method. And so when you do it, you would have, 
I think extrude, revolve, sweep, blend, whatever. I think those were the different choices under the protrusion and the cut commands. Uh, last time I used AutoWorks was probably about three or four years ago. And if I recall back then, they even still had you would choose to create either a boss or a base or a cut. So it's sort of like how SolidWorks does stuff. That's how Pro Engineer was back in the day. But now when you're doing a feature like an extrude or a revolve, you have the ability to choose whether it's going to make a solid feature or a surface feature and whether it's going to remove material or not. And so that's one of the nice things you can flip the nature of a feature by edit definition as to the old days back when a protrusion was always a protrusion and a cut was always a cut. Let's take a look at changing some stuff in here. Let's edit definition, go back to the attributes, hit done. I'm going to change this to both sides and hit done. And so now we see that our cut is symmetric about our sketching plane. And let's edit definition one more time to change this to being 360 degrees. Hit the done button. And there it just takes the material out of there. So again, just like with the flange feature, this is just a revolve. There's no need to have a special command in the software that will create a revolved cut, just like there's no need to have a special command in the software to have a revolved feature that adds material in the model. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're staying home. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you are staying safe. And thanks to our first responders. Thanks to our doctors and nurses and everyone working in hospitals. And thanks to all the people who are keeping the grocery stores open and delivering food to us.